Hey Hi everyone! Guys. Welcome back to Sunday School Online and today we are talking about I is for Isaac. And Isaac should sound familiar to you. Um, remember when we talked about A is for Abraham and how God kept his promise to bring Isaac into the world. So we are back on Isaac and we're going to talk about um, a moment in Isaac's life. And Isaac has a couple different stories throughout his life where he just really teaches us how to um, submit and how to understand that God's will is the plan we should follow, right? And so this is one such story where God's hand is really evident in Isaac's life. So we are going to read you about Isaac and Rebecca, and this is from Selected Verses in Genesis chapter 24. Abraham was now a very old man, and God blessed him in every way. One day, Abraham said to his household administrator, who was his eldest servant, Swear by Jehovah, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not let my son marry one of these local girls, these Canaanites. Go instead to my homeland, to my relatives, and find a wife for him there. But suppose I can't find a girl who will come so far from home, the servant asked. Then shall I take Isaac there to live among your relatives? No, Abraham warned. Be careful that you don't do that under any circumstance. For the Lord God of heaven told me to leave that land and my people and promised to give me and my children this land. He will send his angel on ahead of you and he will see to it that you find a girl there to be my son's wife. But if you don't succeed, then you are free from this oath. But under no circumstances are you to take my son there. So the servant vowed to look to follow Abraham's instructions. He took with him 10 of Abraham's camels, loaded with samples of the best of everything his master owned, and he journeyed to Iraq, to Nahor's village. Then he made the camels kneel down the outside of town beside a spring. It was evening, and the women of the village were coming to draw water. O Jehovah, the God of my master, he prayed, show kindness to my master Abraham, and help me accomplish the purpose of my journey. See, here I am, standing beside this spring. The girls of the village are coming out to draw water. This is my request. When I ask one of them for a drink, and she says, Yes, certainly, and I will water your camels too. Let her be the one you have appointed as Isaac's wife. That's how I will know. As he was still speaking to the Lord about this, a beautiful young girl named Rebecca arrived with a water jug on her shoulder and filled it at the spring. Running over to her, the servant asked her for a drink. Certainly, sir, she said, and quickly lowered the jug for him to drink. Then she said, I'll draw water for your camels too until they've had enough. So she emptied the jug into the water trough and ran down to the spring again and kept carrying water to the camels until they had had enough. The servant said no more, but watched her carefully to see if she would finish the job so that he would know whether she was the one. Then at last, when the camels had finished drinking, he produced a quarter ounce gold earring and two five ounce golden bracelets for her wrist. Whose daughter are you, miss, he said. Would your father have any room to put us up for the night? My father is Bethel, the son of Milcah and the, the wife of Nahor. She replied, yes, we have plenty of straw and food for the camels and a guest room. The man stood there, stood there a moment with his head bowed, worshiping Jehovah. Thank you, Lord God of my master Abraham, he prayed. Thank you for being so kind and true to him and for leading me straight to the family of my master's relatives. The girl ran, ran home to tell her folks. And when her brother Laban saw the ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrist and heard her story, he rushed out to the spring where the man was standing beside his camels and said to him, come and stay with us, friend. Why stand here outside the city when we have room already for you and a place prepared for the camels? So the man went home with Laban and Laban gave him straw to bed down the camels and feed for them and water for the camel drivers to wash their feet. Then supper was served. But the old man said, I don't want to eat until I've told you why I'm here. All right, Levin said, tell us your errand. I am Abraham's servant, he explained, and the Jehovah has overwhelmed my master with blessings so that he's a man of greatness among his people. God has given him flocks of sheep and herds of cattle and a fortune in silver and gold and many slaves and camels and donkeys. Now when Sarah, my master's wife, was very old, she gave birth to my master's son, 
and my master has given him everything he owns. And my master made me promise not to let Isaac marry one of the local girls, but to come to his relatives here in this far off land, to his brother's family, and bring back a girl from here to marry his son. Then Leban and Bethel replied, the Lord has obviously brought you here. So what can we say? Take her and go. Yes, let her be the wife of your master's son as Jehovah has directed. At this reply, Abraham's servant fell to his knees before Jehovah. Then he brought out jewels set in solid gold and silver for Rebekah and lovely clothing, and he gave many valuable presents to her mother and father and brother. Then they had supper, and the servant and men stayed with him overnight. Well, they said, we'll call the girl and ask her if she thinks she can go. So they called Rebekah. Are you willing to go with this man, they asked her, and she replied, yes, I will go. And Isaac brought Rebekah into his mother's tent, and she became his wife, and he loved her very much, and she was a special comfort to him. All right. So that was kind of a love story, but it's really cool how, um, you know, the servant went to find Isaac a wife, and he prayed to God, please, God, please let me know who's the correct wife to bring back for Isaac. And God does, right? He, he allows the servant, you know, to ask him, say, hey, help this girl who's supposed to marry him. Say these words so I'll know. And God does it. Okay, so let's talk about that. We've got a couple questions that we thought you might find so interesting. Okay, so it says that the camels drank their fill and she kept bringing them water and water. Mm -hmm. So um, we thought it might be interesting to ask for you guys to know, how much water did Rebecca actually draw from the well? Yeah, and this is really cool. It was kind of like a science math experiment um, to answer this. So camels can drink at least 20 gallons of water. That's like a jug of milk. Mm -hmm. And a gallon is a jug of milk. So imagine, camels drink 20 jugs of milk, at least, right? And so that would be 20 milk jugs per camel. And they said in the Bible that um, the servant brought 10 camels with him. So we got to do some math for those of you that are good at multiplying. Um, what is 20 times 10? And that is Rebecca had to draw 200 gallons of water. That's a lot of trips to the well. A lot of trips to the water. <laughs> but it does make sense because when you think about it, you know, of course, that would be a good answer to find a wife for Rebecca because here she is and she is not only caring about, you know, herself, but she's caring about other people and animals and showing her kind spirit, which God does care about. Yes. Okay, so we'll move on to what can we learn from Isaac and Rebecca's story? So Isaac and Rebecca really teach us that God puts people into our lives for a reason. You know, think about everyone who's in your life. They're in that in your life for a reason and for a purpose. And the reason why God chooses these specific people is so that they can help you um, fulfill his plan for your life. So, and they, they come into our lives at the right moment, right? Imagine, like the servant could have gone to the town at a different time, at a different time, right? And tried to find a girl. If Rebecca wasn't there, it wouldn't have happened would it? So God makes sure that when things happen in our lives, they happen at the right time and with the right people. Yeah. And they also show us that we need to trust, right? Isaac really hadn't met Rebecca, had he? But he knew, he knew as soon as his servant told him, this is the one that God chose for you. He trusted God. He trusted God's influence in his life. And he didn't say, oh, are you sure, God? Are you sure in question, did he? No, he, he said that he made her his wife and he loved her and she was a special comfort to him. So it just shows all of that trust that Isaac had in the Lord um, and in God's will working out for his life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. okay. Let's show them the cute craft. Yep, so we've got a craft, and for our craft, you need some paper, okay? Uh, you need your hand, you need paint, and um, I mixed my brown paint with white to get a little bit lighter brown color, but it's up to you. You can use tan, you can use brown, 
um, you can mix it together like I did. And, and if you don't have paint, mm -hmm. um, you can trace your hand and then color it brown. Yes. And you need a paintbrush and something to draw and write with afterwards. So what you're going to do is you are going to mix up that paint and then you are going to paint it onto your hand. Um, and you are going to place your handprint on the paper just like that. Okay. And then you are going to use your paintbrush to turn that handprint into a camel. Yep, she turned her, her thumb, your little head on the end of her thumb. Yep, so my hand was just like that. And I turned these four fingers into hooves, so you can see. Um, you draw a little tail for your camel, and then with your thumb, you just kind of make that a neck and give him a little head, right? And then after that paint dries, because you want to make sure that it's dry first, you can go back, you can add the camel's eyes, you can trace around it like I did, you can make those hooves, um, you can kind of outline the tail, give him more of a little hairy tail. Uh, make sure you draw your well to remember the story of Isaac and Rebecca, how God showed Rebecca giving water to the camels to allow us to see that she was the one Isaac was supposed to marry. And then write, live a life led by God up top. So we know we should always um, live a life that's led by God and listen to God's will in our life, right? And we also have a fun game. Yes, so our game, for our game, you'll need, like, you can kind of, um, I have rocks, but they're two different colors. You can use game pieces. You can use scraps of colored paper, beads, um, but you want, for how, however many people are playing this game, you want them to have different colors or different ways of knowing whose is whose, right? And then you need a blindfold. So it, this is a little scrap of fabric, like a bandana, um, that we can tie around us, right? And you want to make sure that it fits around your eyes because you don't want to see, right? Because this is this is a game that's going to help us trust, like no Isaac peeking. had trust. No peeking. <laughs> so you can't peek, right? And you will scatter the different game pieces over the ground randomly. Um, I would do this after the blindfold is on the first person. So if I were being blindfolded, Miss Elaine would scatter the game pieces around and then she would direct me to my color and I would only be able to pick up one color piece. So she would have to tell me just with words and I'd have to listen to her not being able to see to pick up those pieces. So she'd have to tell me like left, right, hot, cold, however you'd like. Okay, we'll try one. Mm -hmm. Move your hand slightly to the right. Hot, hot, hot. Okay. Okay. I've got one. You got one. Yay! So then afterwards, after you collect all your pieces, you can see. But it's a good exercise in trust. And then obviously after my turn would be done, Miss Elaine would put the blindfold on and I would have to direct her. And you can practice them getting something in your house. Like maybe you can direct them mm -hmm. around the couch and making Ooh. sure that, you know, or somewhere like that or direct them to the dinner table. Yeah. Um, just make sure you uh, remove big obstacles. We don't want anybody getting hurt. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Not getting hurt. Okay. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear God, thank you so much for sending us the story of Isaac and Rebecca to show us that you put people into our lives for a reason. Please help us to trust in your will and in your plan that you have for all of us and allow us to see and reflect on why people are in our lives and why we might be in others' lives. In your name we pray, amen. And we are thankful that all of you are in our lives. Yes. So we love our we church are. family. Yeah. We so, do. And we do. We include that in our prayers all the mm -hmm. time. So thank you for being a part of our church family. Yep. And we will see you next week. Bye.